All right, today is part two of the Peterbilt truck frame stretch. Uh, let's get this out of the way to begin, to begin with. Uh, what you're watching is purely entertainment. Uh, this is not a how-to. I am not telling you how. It's not a how-to. It's not an instructional. It's not a technical video. If you need to do this to your truck, I highly suggest you seek out a uh, experienced, highly trained, and certified person, shop, whatever, to do any alterations to your truck frame whatsoever. This is nothing more than entertainment value. You're gonna watch this guy put a truck together because you have nothing better to do than waste about 30 minutes of your, of your evening watching my horrible videos. That being said, again, do not try this at home. If you need to alter your truck frame, again, seek out the properly trained, certified, experienced individuals to do this work. Do not do what I'm about to do at home. On with the video. Okay, so this is part two of the Peterbilt frame stretch. What you're looking at here is an old piece of truck frame that is in really good condition. It's got a little bit of paint flaking, but there's no rust jacking. This is 10 foot long. We don't need a 10 foot long, but um, it is a good thick frame. Um, it's at least quarter inch thick. So we're gonna make this our liner to go inside that frame. Those are reduced down to just two frame rails now. So the next step of this is we need to figure out how long this needs to be. We need to figure out what is the length we need. So there, the way I do it is a couple factors. One is where in the wheelbase, okay, from here back to there. That's, that's the wheelbase. Well, the wheelbase is to the center, but I'm gonna go to that front leaf spring hanger and find the center. So when I find the center, when as if i'm closer to the steer or closer to the drives then i could do uh, a two times meaning whatever this height is i multiply that by two let's call this 10 inches that means i would need 20 inches in front of the splice and then 20 inches behind the splice now that means i'm saying from where the splice starts to where the splice ends is 20 inches plus the amount of length it takes for the splice. So in this case, that's an 18 inch splice. So we'd have 20, 40, 58. So we'd be right at 60, we'd call it five feet. Now, I tend to overdo things and occasionally now and then. So sometimes I'll take that and I'll do times three. Like normally I wouldn't need that unless I was like right out in the belly, right in the center of it, but I like things a little stronger. So if I take 10, right, times three, then I'm, then I'm 30, 60, and then 78. So we'd probably end up right at, you know, 78 or 84, seven foot probably. Um, if you notice, I'm, I've changed my ideas of what I'm going to do for the splice. I like an angle cut. I'd like this curved, come out like this, flat horizontal, curve back down and at an angle. I know there's variations where guys come like this and they come on a, a nice curve, flatten out, and then curve, and then come straight back down. I don't like the straights as much as I like the angle. So I'm considering that. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing it for sure, but if not, it'll be you know something on an angle like this on a 45. Uh, if I had more skills, I would try something like this where I took and made a keyhole and come up like this and cut it, and then cut that frame to match because then it would lock in quite well, I think. Um, it definitely couldn't come apart this way. It would be pushing on the frame here, and then as our compression, we'd be pushing on here, would push up on here, and the same thing, when you're pushing up on here, it's pushing down on here. I don't know, just a thought. If I had more skills, I would try that, but yeah, I just don't think I can, at least not in this, not right now. So that's where we're at. 
So the next thing I had to do is start working on that and getting it cleaned up, flap disc, the whole thing. Next step is I want to do my layouts to cut the frame because I don't want to clean up more frame than we need to because it would just be a waste of time. So what I did was I, I've laid this out for different options of my cut because um, what I want is to spread that load. So if I do a direct, this, if you don't know what we're doing, this liner, we're going to put this inside this frame where we splice it. And I'm, I'm trying to uh, spread the load where this liner goes. If, you, if I take it like this and cut it straight, that means all the compression right here is in one little area, right? It's focusing right here. And the likeliness that this could fail or crack the frame is greater than if I take and cut the frame back like this, two inches or four inches, and now we're spreading the load here and then we're spreading it here. So that same load, instead of being concentrated here, is concentrated here. And that's the goal. And I just laid out several options to see which one I like the best. And I think we're going with uh, number four here. Um, we're gonna plasma cut this off and cut it straight down. Uh, a lot of times I use a Milwaukee circular saw and I may just do that with that because it'll almost cut all the way through, but not completely and I can finish it off with a die grinder. And then when we go to put this in, both of the flanges, top, hmm, this is bottom, bottom and top, we'll take that edge where it is and we'll, we'll take a flap disc and we'll round it up so we don't have a sharp edge sitting on the frame. So that's the next step. Once we cut these, I, cut the, I got that laid out. I'm gonna lay out my length here, get this laid out. We'll get our, the excess cut off and then we can start working more on cutting the center. Okay, so when I laid this out, I used this as a spacer, two and a half inches, which is what it is from across here to my blade. And I noticed that we would end up right there in the rough part of that cut. So I just held it proud just a little bit at the top. And you can see that saw makes an absolutely beautiful cut. Now again, I'll dress this right here with a flap disc real quick. I'm gonna do that right now. Dress the whole thing, make sure there's no sharp edges. This is just crud here. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. I don't know if that's going to show up well at all or not, but we've got a nice rounded edge right there, and then we've just barely kissed the edge of that just so there's nothing sharp there rubbing as well. We don't want any of that because if there's any of this movement, we could have the same issue. So I don't want to discount that either. And then we got this side rounded as well. I think I'm going to take just a little bit more off of that edge right there, clean it up. Uh, just just for the, to roll that edge. And then next step is I'm gonna come down here. We're going 84 inches. So we're gonna be in this area somewhere in here. So I'll mark that all out, move my saw horses up and we'll cut that and just reproduce this. We are done. I've got it all rounded over real nice. I'm happy with that. So the next thing is we have to take care of the width. Now I need nine and seven eighths. So I don't wanna just cut enough out that when I put this together, they're touching. I want just a slight gap between the two so that when we go to weld it together, our weld goes all the way through. So I'm going to lay this out next and we'll figure out how much we got to take out of here. And then uh, we'll rip it with that Milwaukee M18 metal cutting circular saw. I'm telling you, that tool makes everything so much nicer to work with so much better results. I mean, I barely even flapped this this edge. It was really that nice. Okay, so here's our math. This frame here is 10 and 3 eighths outside to outside. I need it to be 9 and 7 eighths. So that's basically makes it 4 eighths simplified a half inch. Now what I want to do is take that off of the middle. 
so I'm just taking a quarter inch either way of my line and when I make that I guarantee you when I cut that line I will have just a just a ever so slight gap so now we just got to trace these two lines all the way down and then I will cut this one so far up stop and then cut the other one that way my piece stays together and when I'm laying I'm running my saw across I've got a good table to hold the saw on instead of trying to hold this up and the, the saw flipping around I want I want good accurate cuts both ways I had to recut this end because when I shortened this up, it made the top section a little bit longer and uh, I didn't line up, so I just took and cut it again to match. So now we're all good there again. Now I can start grinding in the V in this area here. All right, so this side is done. I've got my V ground on both sides here and I'm leaving just a, a little bit of material, probably you probably have a third ground off, a third ground off, and a third left maybe. I don't know if that's real accurate, but probably somewhere around there. So now that's ready to go, and I've taken a needle scaler to the inside of this, down the valleys, and a wire wheel to try and get it all cleaned up, make sure there's no burrs or anything weird on it that would stop us from going in. You know, on these edges, sometimes we'll get a little, little damage here or there, so we've got to be careful. So now that that one's done, we will just do the same thing on this one and then it can be ready to go as a matter of fact this one had yeah this one's got some you can see some a little bit of damage here it's on the inside it won't hurt us but I just want to be aware of it so i've got this one needle scaled and wire wheeled too so all i have to do now is just v both sides so this is why i don't buy dewalt grinding discs anymore i run into this an awful lot where they just are not made flat so then they end up vibrating because they're thicker on one side than they are the other. And uh, I, just, I just, whatever, I just don't buy them anymore. I, I found Benchmark and I like theirs, they work pretty well. Um, but anyways, I'm just gonna use these up. This will last, I have two more of these. I usually buy them by, I think 50 at a time, but I just use it up and then throw it away. So inside of this truck frame, the liner needs to be nine and seven eighths and that's right where we're at and i really want that to be snug we're right at nine seven eighths i want that snug because this frame needs more support than the donor frame now the donor frame is not only thicker but it's a different height and it needs to be nine and a half inches where it goes in here so i'm right at nine and a half inches okay um the problem is when i'm checking it down through here I've mentioned this before about truck frame, it's, it's never exact, but my splice is right there where that red line is. That's where the frames are gonna, the center of the frame is gonna come together. So I need nine and a half inches, and look, we're at nine and 11 sixteenths. So that's gonna be really difficult to get in there. And it's not like that because our cut's not right, because I have a gap in my cut. It's like that because, like I was saying about truck frame, you look here, we know the bottom of this frame's clean because I cleaned it off good. You know, there's no gap there, and there's no gap. <clears throat> On this side, you can see it's a good 90. But when you get up here, the bottom of the rail, which is the bottom of our liner, it's good too. There's no gap, but when you come over here to this 
top side. We're not a 90. You can see how the, the flange is out at the top. So when I go to weld this, I'm gonna have to put a clamp in here to pull this together because I can't have that sticking hot 11 16 we'll never get it in there I mean we'll we'll have to beat on it with a hammer so bad that you know it's just not not what I want to do all right so I just took the clamp and I pulled on this just a little bit a little bit of tension and I was able to get it right where I want it at 9 and 9 16 so um, I don't have any more of these clamps and before I go and weld this I would like to have uh, something to keep these two flat every so often because I don't want this thing you know turning into you know a round C channel instead of flat this is what it looks like before a little bit of paint flaking well most of the paints flaking but we'll get it all cleaned up and make it uh, suitable to use so I'll use a needle scaler after that we'll hit it with a wire wheel and if need be the flap disc So now that there's nothing on the inside of the frame rail, we are able to take the liners that I made and we'll take that one, it's two halves, and we'll stuff it up in there and let's see how it fits before we go any farther because if I gotta do any changes in the welding then, or changes in the width, I wanna do it before I weld these into place, you know, weld them solid. So that's where we're headed next. All right, so I've tack welded, you know, a few stitches down through here, just enough to hold it flat. So now the next step is we're gonna put it in here, clamp it into place and start drilling our holes and see what we have and what interferes wherever. So we'll know what we have to weld shut. All right, liner's in place. I've got it set where I want it and I've got it clamped so it can't move. So the next thing I wanna do is drill these holes. Through this frame, the existing holes, the ones we're going to be using. So these holes in this frame were punched. So when they use a hydraulic punch, um, it gives you a, you know, the right diameter here. But as it pushes through the material, it kind of widens up a little bit. We don't want to make it as wide as the whole thing. So it requires a 5 8 bolt. That's what we're going to use. We're going to drill that hole as 5 8 And as we go, we'll start putting some bolts in just to hold it. So it's not going to get off at all because I want that liner perfectly tight. So we're going to drill all these holes. You can't believe it, but not one of the holes that we need fell on an existing hole in that frame. So we got pretty lucky. Let's get drilling. We just finished drilling all the holes for the inner frame to the main frame because we needed to transfer these because we've got a lot of equipment that gets mounted on here. Our splice is going to be right here where this cross member is. It's going to be right between this one and this one in this area. You see the line here. But we needed to get that liner in there and drill all those holes from the outside in so that we can have them all finished up. And I don't lose my, I don't have to measure the stuff. This is the best template we can get. By doing it this way, I use the factory frame. All my holes are done. So when we butt our new frame up to this one, all I have to do is go to the inside and drill my holes through the outside of that one, you know, after we're lined up and welded, that is. And then my alignment here should be perfect for my cross members. So the next thing I need to do, I got a donor frame outside. We need to get it up here, get it get it stripped apart. It's a cutoff, no axles, and we need to get all the cross members out. We got to get all the um, uh, reduce it down to the, just this because that's going to be my outer frame. So I need to do that next. Uh, we're going to take this old truck frame, disassemble it, get it cleaned up. We're going to cut the bottom lip off of one side, and then we're just going to set it up on top of there.
can't ask for a better combination between this and that. So we just cut 17 feet of frame in like five minutes and it's done. I just need to dress the edges, the corners a little bit and, it's, and that cut's ready to go. So the process is to needle scale everything, get everything off there that would possibly could be an issue and then wire wheel it all the way down and then take a flap disc and roll the edge here and I want to roll the edge here as well as up here so now that one is ready to go we've done both sides it's all handled so we need to take the liner out of that side and then we can slide the new outer on this side and line it up we're going to clamp them all in place and then we'll start the monumental task of drilling holes which will take probably uh, the rest of the day and part of tomorrow that's what I'm thinking. So we got both of these cut and we've got them on the truck and clamped into place so we can drill them. So we need to drill in from this way out now. So I wish this was a little bit wider and a little bit longer. But you know what? We're working with what we have. There's uh he has no money to do this, so we just have to do what we can do and uh you know with the best results we can get. Adding this is not required. It's just a little extra strength. That's all um, I'd like to come down a little bit farther here, but we I couldn't get any more because the frame starts to roll right there um, But what we're gonna find is more than likely our bottom holes here are gonna be close Down here if I've done my math right we should have about a quarter of an inch below the hole of metal left so our washer may extend past just a an eighth to maybe three sixteenths of an inch past here but i don't think that's a big deal i mean i think for what we're gaining it's it's totally acceptable i don't think i have a problem with it at all so let's get to drilling well there's some of our holes we just started on drilling this side and we got about a quarter of an inch so i put a couple bolts in because i want to hold the the frame tight and you can see it's just barely below the bottom so I think we're gonna be okay I can live with that you know for the extra added strength and it not exactly a hundred percent perfect um, I think it's worth it to have it that way so let's continue to drill We just finished drilling the outside liners and we have been drilling like you can't believe uh, when we did the two inside liners uh, we drilled 66 holes total in both liners and then we put that outer one on and we drilled 66 holes or 67 holes on that one and on this one we drilled 64 five eighths ones and then we went back through and did three eighths so we're pushing 200 holes we've drilled in this so far and we're not done because remember this is uh up in here this right here and right here is the front leaf spring hanger front drive axle and we still have a rear drive axle and possibly a lift axle to go so the next step would be that we take these off and we're going to cut that frame and start with our splice we're already getting long the video and we still need to weld up our liners on the inside and the back side. I'm gonna hold off on that in this video because uh, we have Peter Zillas coming from USA Welds and uh, he is bringing an HTP PP220 Pulse MIG and he's gonna bring it, show us how to set it up, show us the features, the functions, um, some techniques, and he's also bringing a special wire and a different gas to do a technique on this particular frame liner and the frame stretch so that it becomes more flexible um, and matches the tensile strength of this. And for the first time, I'll get an actual real welding lesson. So I'm really looking forward to meeting him. And because this guy's forgotten more about welding than I'll probably ever know. 
Um, so hopefully, you know, he can help me to curve and fix some things that I have troubles with. But that's going to be in the next video because it's going to be a lot of information. Um, so we'll pick this up in the next part. And if there's enough room in the next part, we'll be splicing that frame. If not, that'll be the part after. But I hope you guys enjoyed and catch you on the next one.